Wisconsin, but we have an alpaca state of mind. Test number four in the North Park kicks us off here on day number two of competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar. We got Nikki Brazier down on the field. We'll hear from her in a second. And we are joined in the booth by the six-time fittest woman on earth and her daughter, Tia Toomey. How you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for having us. Well, thanks for being here. What's this experience like for you now being here as a, as a spectator? Oh, it's really crazy, actually. You know, I've, I've got mixed emotions, I will admit. Um, obviously, it's absolutely worth having a year off and, and having holding my baby girl. Um, but, man, I just want to be out on that floor. We will talk more about that here in a second. But let's get you caught up on the overall standings after three tests. <laughs> And it is Alexis Raftis, who is your overall leader, 270 out of a possible 300 points. Emily Rowe sits in second place by 21 points over Ariel Lowen. And it is close between spots three through seven, so a lot still that needs to be decided over these next three days. Test four, Stacey, the way we were supposed to do it last year at the Alpaca. It is the Alpaca. Here we go, 126 foot uh, sled push there. Women have 400. 43 pounds to load, then three rounds for time. Two legless rope climbs, 12 of those kettlebell clean and jerks, and then a 42 foot slot push back and loading those kettlebells along the way. Recipe for success, what are you looking for here? Here's the deal, you wanna push the rope climbs, but you gotta always save a little reserve in the tank, and then you definitely wanna keep a steady, consistent pace on those clean and jerks. No, no reps for sure. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier, the third member of our broadcast crew down on the field. Hey guys, part of what makes the CrossFit Games so unique and exciting is the specific implements we get to test here. Stacey mentioned this, the sled itself weighs about 124 pounds empty, but add these kettlebells into it. We're looking at 450 pounds for the women. They will have to push it down the field of play and complete all the elements of this test before pushing it back. As soon as the sled hits this blue marker on the ground, they'll be good to go to run to the finish. 20 women in this first of two heats. Two athletes we will be watching right in the middle of the field, Karin Freova and Emma Carey. Freova coming in in 23rd place overall, Emma Carey in 21st. The two of them looking to do some damage here in this test. For sure, Freova last year uh, placed third in this event. Now that didn't include the legless rope climbs due to that weather inclement there, but hey, we'll see how she handles this load and if she's been preparing for this test all year long. Is Emma Carey, who had a crash in the opening test ride that really set her back. I didn't get to see that because I was busy competing in yes. the Masters division. And congratulations are in order. Stacy finished second in the 35 to 39 year old division, so congratulations on that. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Uh, but I heard about it, and uh, man, I was so impressed to see her just flip the switch. Uh, coming back after that last place finish into a solid event test uh, four on the big event. Well, Tia, people who may have watched the documentary got a really good behind the scenes look at you and it did seem like there was something different to me. and I don't want to say that you, you had lost motivation or anything like that. Or I was pregnant. But, or, and that, or, right, or, or anything like any distractions. Well, <laughs> but how is being here, and you mentioned this a little bit at the top, rekindled that fire for you to want to go out and compete? Uh, you know, I, I know I stood on top of the podium last year, but I definitely walked away very unsatisfied with my performance last year. And that fuel, like a couple months after the games, just definitely made me want to do another year. And, um, you know, it, it's wild because, you know, everything happens for a reason. And to, found, like, to have found out that I was pregnant, I'm, I definitely must have needed a little bit of a break because I tell you what, I've never had this much fire since I was a rookie. And, you know, I had definitely something to prove. So um, also to just watch these athletes out on the floor, you know, they put so much hard work all season into it. And for them to be able to showcase, it's just, I'm a little envious. I just want to go out there and, and, and you know, be, be with them, you know? Emma Carey and Ellie Turner are your leaders right now as they approach the final drop-off point. 18-minute time cap here, and timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch 
of the Noble CrossFit Games. How have you and Shane been managing things here you know, with everything you have going on? Yeah, there's so much going on, you know. Be we honest. Have, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Reality versus Instagram, you know, no. Nah. But uh, we have a proven booth here uh, in the Vin Vendor Village. So we've got a great team operating that, and that's definitely been helping us out. Shane is coaching Olivia um, and, you know, and a bunch of the other proven athletes. Um, and then for me, I'm doing a lot of appearances. And honestly, Willow has just been such an angel. And I know I'm her mom and I'm very biased, but she has literally been sleeping on me the whole time, so allowing me to do everything that I need to. There are a lot of parents out there that are very envious of that yeah. situation. I'm one. Yeah, I'm looking at her like, my kid never did this. Oh, I know, I'm very, very lucky. It's a false, uh, if we have another one, I, I hear it's never going to be like this. So embrace it, essentially. The second is uh, trouble, for sure. McCary on the left side of your screen is through her first of two rope climbs. Ellie Turner on the right getting started on hers. Pate Semenza is also towards the front here as well. We'll keep an eye on her. First of two heats for the women. Yeah, it's really cool that we actually get to see the workout with right. what we wanted to do, obviously, last year. Um, and, and just see the difference, you know. I think, I think it's going to be a little bit different for the females versus the males. Males is a little bit overall, you know. I don't think that there's going to be um, what well, we've seen, you know. They they could both do, you know, the legless rope climbs and the, um, the sled push and the kettlebells. But um, with the women, it's really going to come down to who can be efficient on the rope climbs and then also who can move the kettlebells nice and efficiently. The carry is now done. Hello. With her second and final rope climb here in round one. And now 12 kettlebell cleaning jerks, 53 pounds each. She handled the pig extremely well, I must say, yesterday. She's taking fourth in that test. And that, for a tiny girl, I mean, she's only weighing in at 140 pounds. It was impressive. I mean, that would have technically been more of a, okay, I say weakness, but it's. You know, maybe she didn't take a top 10 in that test or whatever, but she handled it with grace and with ease, and I was really impressed with that finish, and if that says anything about, you know, what's to come or maybe the strength that she, uh, you know, just improved in this last off season, um, speaks volumes about her fitness right now. Absolutely, you know, and I think she was coming off a back injury, so to be able to get back out on that floor, you know, come back from an injury, is very impressive. I, I definitely think the younger generation that's coming through, they're, they're so strong, you know. When I look back at my age um, and, and where they are, my goodness, it's incredible what they're doing. They sure are, and you know, I was I was the earlier of, uh, you know, started this in 2009, so I gotta just kind of gain strength as the yep. sport kind of evolved. Um, and here they are, just straight out of the gate. Boom, just so strong. Yes, so impressive. Yeah, and it, it is very impressive. As long as they've got a good team around them, making sure that it's healthy, progressing forward, you know, um, it came into our lives a little bit later on. And as they're, you know, starting off very, very young, um, it's going to be very important that they like gradually build and, and you know think of their health and the longevity of their career as an athlete in CrossFit. You know, then. Emma Carey is now done and will push her sled forward to the next station. 24 kilos with those kettlebells weigh. Sled is 124 pounds. It's about 56 kilos. As they advance this sled further on down the field, they're adding more load. What I noticed when I was watching the men do this test is you kind of need your legs to get yourself up that rope with a, with a kick. You know, you're using your hips, you're using that momentum, and you can see the leg fatigue settle in as they get advanced down the field. Their kicks aren't as strong. And I mean, you're talking about upper body pushes and presses with pulling with these kettlebells. You're blasted. And so we'll see. Emma Carey kind of kept her arms bent the entire time on that sled push. We'll see how she uses her legs um, more, if that's even a factor for her. And it's also interesting to see their footwear too, you know. Being on the turf, you don't want to obviously have anything that's going to be too slippery, especially with a heavy sled like this. So uh, they're doing really well. Paige Semenza is now done with her second sled push, and she will join Emma Carey back on the rope. 
This is the first of two rope climbs for Emma Carey. I remember last year. It was uh, on the very last day, so obviously a little bit more fatigue had kicked in after doing the whole weekend. But um, the shoulders were on fire last year, and so in order to uh, you know, do these rope climbs, especially with the new standard, very impressive what they're doing. Emma Carey just got here to no rep. She got to the top, but did not control her descent. We will see how she handles this. We see a lot of athletes run into trouble here on the rope climbs. When you talk about the grip fatigue and the shoulder fatigue, the leg fatigue, when the more time you spend on that rope, the more time under tension. So you want those short, choppy little hand over hand pulls, keeping them as close to the front of the eyes and the forehead as possible. And I only saw that out of the, her first rope climb there with Emma. And then she reserved and went back to that long kip. And that, again, it may work for someone. It does not work for me. I don't know about you, Tia, but it's just more time under tension. And I, I can see the fatigue in her legs building, and that's why she's not able to use her legs and that short little choppy step to get up that rope. Yeah, I know. So I had to wait until I was. Uh, I had Willow the whole pregnancy. I'm watching the athletes do this new thing in the, on the rope, and um, I finally uh, got to try it out. And you really do have to really emphasize that hip. Um, you know, starting low and then having to really use that hip drive in order to not fatigue too much in the pull. Emma Carey trying to rest enough to get that first rope climb knocked out. And as we say that, Sean, here comes Ellie Turner. Done with her first leg list there. Taking a little seat, gonna rest it out. No rush, there's no rush. But she did already surpass Emma Carey. Yeah, it's really important to stay in your lane in a workout like this. You know, you can start out too hot and then just absolutely fall off. And you definitely don't want to be doing that, especially at the CrossFit Games. Um, but definitely staying in your lane, focusing on what you can control, focusing on, you know, your, your strength and maybe where you need to take a little bit more time. Um, Ellie definitely There's knows where she needs to take that time to rest Williams. and recover and, and get back into it. Making her way back. Text macro to 69456 to get free beef for life and 40% off trifecta meal delivery. Eat elite. Wow. For life. That's crazy. I'll take it. <laughs> the Paige Semenza, Afisa Gaffi, and Alexia Williams are your three leaders right now. Paige getting right to work on these kettlebells. We'll see how she breaks this up here. She's also re-dipping underneath those kettlebells. I mean, they're called an odd object for a reason, folks. These things are not light. They're awkward. They're funky. One can go up at a different time than the other, so it takes consistency, it takes accuracy, it takes power, precision, and strength on top yep. of all of that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And it's funny because last year, and it's just because you're under the pump, you're competing, you want to go fast. And I remember I started out real hot. <laughs> so I'm talking from experience here. And I was doing push press to start off with. And man, that was a bad idea because they fried up so quickly. And uh, definitely getting that dip drive and getting underneath that weight to use the legs to actually get that weight up is so crucial. Let's bring in Nikki Brazer down on the field. Guys, it's interesting to see Paige Semenza up front because yesterday when I was having a chat with her, she let me know that her personal goal here has really shifted as the season carried on from being focused on a very specific finish, top 15, to now really letting go of that expectation and just trying to soak in every bit of competing. It had been a really tough year for her, but she said that it helped her grow in many ways through resilience and adversity. She said, I just kept showing up day after day, and this is the big week Again, to show exactly what that statement means. Semenza only has three reps to go, now two. Alexia Williams and Fisa Gaffey right behind her. Kelly Baker and Victoria Compass running out the top five. Yeah, Paige looking strong, 
Murphy taking a quick shake. I've noticed the difference between their two uh, kettlebell clean and jerks. Fee is actually pausing at the top of the shoulders, just a true testament to what these kettlebells, just getting them to the shoulders can do to someone. But I'm not so sure I, I like that strategy. I think the more you put those on your shoulders, the more the shoulders are going to fatigue a little bit. But I mean, with this odd object, you just kind of have to do whatever you do, make sure you don't get a no rep. So for her, it's just settling into knowing she can get underneath that, the kettlebells there. Yeah, having a little bit more control. Yeah. Paige Semenza knows a lot about leg drive. She's a former hockey player, played at Ohio State University. Her senior season, she was tied for the team lead in goals. She scored 13 and had seven multiple point games and a hat trick against North Dakota. What a stud. Push that with ease. I like that she let her arms relax a little bit. Meanwhile, Emma Carey, you guys, got through one legless rope climb, but she's still resting and waiting for that feeling of ready to go again, come back. I, I don't know if you one of you have ever been in this position, but this has got to be frustrating, knowing that there is nothing you can do but rest. I have been. <laughs> I'm sitting next to the six-time champ, so I doubt she has, but it is a horrible feeling. Uh, you just want to... you. You, you can't do anything about it. You literally just have to wait until you get that that feeling of, Joining okay, the I, I've got this again. Rebecca. I can go again and hope I for the best. Yeah, there's definitely a time. Every, everyone sure goes through it, you know. You have to take the moment and you have to really put your hands together. together. And not pay attention to what's happening around you. That's yeah. also the hardest part. Isn't you it? talked about that sense yep. of urgency. You see everyone just accumulating reps, and, and your body's just responding with, now is not the time. You still <laughs> just have to sit here and wait. Yep. And it can be a combination of things, you know. So this year, and you've heard the athletes talk about it, it is very hot out there. So, you know, maybe the heat this year compared to last year is definitely having a huge influence on some, um, especially if they're not staying hydrated, which is absolutely key throughout the summer and also here in Madison. Uh, and to optimize the performance, right? I also think, you know, last year they descended in there reps 20, 15, 10, and this year it's 12 across, so that you get that feeling of, oh, 12's not so bad, but 20, <laughs> I definitely have to break it up. But you have to be strategic, and it's easy to kind of come out hot, like you said, and take the 12 <laughs> as I'm broken, when maybe you should have just broken up a few, a few times starting off. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get to that six, seventh, eighth rep, and then you're like, oh, I still got four to go. Kate <laughs> Semenza is through her first of two row climbs here. And Emma Carey, who was our early leader, is trying to get herself through this second round. That's the short, choppy little step she needs, and that's what she started with, but now you can see she's going back to that really long kip. It's just more grip, more fatigue, more time on that rope. Oh, oh, oh and she clamps. Oh, that's and you're, so costly. It is costly, and you talk about the heat, Tia. Um, and none of these athletes are wearing gloves. They also don't have their grips around their hands. So you run the risk of actually a, a rope burn. Yep. Um, and, and that you definitely don't want. You got to use your hands for a really long weekend ahead. So Absolutely. unfortunate. I hope she's not getting a burn, but that is a risk you take falling off the rope like that. Especially when you don't. They also have their eyes on the clock. And Especially when you don't two know and what and the and other and events are coming up. If you have to hold on to the pull-up bar in the Coliseum, you know, you definitely want to make sure that your hands are good to go for the rest of the weekend. It is definitely really important. And, oh, man, it's just such a long wreck. It is. Everyone resting right now at this portion of the test. And we have two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Paige Semenza is the leader. She only has one leg this road climb remaining, and then she'll head back for 12 final clean and jerks. And then the final sled push across the finish. 
You know, and we know Amanda Barnhart is a machine at sleds, and, you know, she's even having to break up the sled herself. And so that just goes to show how heavy it really is as it's, uh, you know, increasing the weight as they progress through. So what these athletes are doing out on this floor is unbelievable. You know, I've never actually sat up here and looked, you know, looked over the floor. It's beautiful. It is. It's a good view. It's My beautiful. And that is the best feeling ever when you finally make a rope climb after waiting for a really long time to get up the rope and the crowd is rooting behind you. That's Rebecca Vinnison who is now in the lead. She's so tall. <laughs> there you go, look at her. Looking strong. She is. Nice big hip drive off the top of the shoulders there. Strategic break. And she is fighting for the lead with Abigail Doman. Now Alexia Williams is working her way to the kettlebells. We have 30, about 35 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. That 30 seconds in the background, and it's like just accumulate reps. It's 30 seconds, accumulate reps. You can do this. Yeah, one step at a time. Just keep progressing forward. Yep. Dominic gets back to work over here in lane number four. These girls are trying to dig deep. You can just tell. They want to keep going, but physically, they just. as Kiki counts us down. Abigail Doan right now is your leader through 43 of the 47 total score repetitions. But no one is going to finish, but Domit is going to have the top score. Way to go, ladies. Way to go. A late charge from Domit and Vinnison. Unofficially, Domit gets through nine reps on the clean and jerk. Tia, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. We really appreciate it. We know you're busy, and uh, it's always a pleasure having you up here and talking to you. Yeah. Best of luck moving forward, and looking forward to seeing you next season. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It's great. Final heat coming up next here in the North Park. Final heat for the women in the fourth test here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we kick off individual action on Friday at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with the second fittest woman in the 35 to 39 year old division, Stacey Tovar, and Nikki Brazer is down on the competition field. Overall standings after three tests, Alexis Raptus is our overall leader. Emily Rolf sits in second, followed by Ariel Lowen, but it is extremely tight. Spots eight through three. So these three tests that the athletes will face today can certainly change what you're looking at right now. Test number four, it's not a test, Stacey, it's a state of mind, it's the alpaca. <laughs> Apparently so, it is the alpaca. For real this time, with the legless rope climbs, 126 foot sled push to start things off, 443 pounds on that thing, and three rounds for time, two legless rope climbs, 12 kettlebell clean and jerks, and then a 40 foot, 42 foot sled push, unloading those kettlebells, and adding weight as you go recipe for success here you want to pace the rope climbs you saw it with the men you saw it with the last heat and the women with the women there you got to be strategic though and then push those clean and jerks lane assignments here for the second and final heat 20 women will be out on the field overall leaders will be right in the middle Alexis Rapp is your overall leader she'll be in lane number 10 and Ariel Lowen, who currently sits in third place overall, will be in lane number nine. And for more on her, let's go down to Nikki Brazier. I am not at all surprised to see Ariel in that third place spot because yesterday she told me that she is feeling so incredibly confident about this season. Not necessarily that she'll win, but that she's trained differently and more than ever before. Though you may be wondering about that bandage on her elbow. She did say an old injury flared up on Monday. We'll see how she fares with these rope climbs. We mentioned Alexis Raptus, your overall leader, 270 out of a possible 300 points and has yet to finish outside the top five. 
three top five finishes yesterday. This girl's on fire. A fifth in the ride, a third in the pig chipper, and a fifth in the inverted medley. I like seeing her in that white leader jersey, Sean. I think many people may be surprised that she's your overall leader after day one, but if you talk to the training think tank crew where she trains, they were not surprised by that at all. Here's the best part, she believes in it. She said it last night, she visualizes herself in that thing. I'm all for that, I like it, I like it. Well, Jamie Simmons is gonna be the first woman to start unloading her kettlebells, completing that first section, and she is right back on the sled. Jamie, though, I don't know if they have to take it off in a certain order, but I would have recommended taking off the kettlebells at the front versus the back. Now you see her struggling. The weight is forward loaded, and she's struggling there. She's got to get a little lower, use more legs, use more push. Well, she's the only woman that took the back kettlebells off, and now a lot of people are starting to pass her, one of whom is Annie Thorstadter, who is right now the leader along with Laura Horvath. Emily Rolf as well. Took the first ones from the front. Now Alexis, I'm kind of surprised. Um, there's a few girls with the bent arm, but I kind of like the straight arm strategy a little bit more. You see Annie in front there, Horvath next to her. Um, two different approaches with that sled. I would want the blood to just flow down rather than pull in that elbow bicep position. You're gonna be using a lot of that unless they plan on hanging on the rope with those straight arms and using a longer kip swing to get up. If you're using those short choppy little steps, oh my goodness, that could be devastating. And that could be just where all the muscle fatigue has already accumulated just for pushing a simple sled. You might not think about that, but it accumulates when you're using that same hand over here in short, choppy little step position on a legless rope climb. Laura Horvath, Annie Thor's daughter, and Katrin David's daughter would be the first three women to the rope. Horvath getting right to work. Annie Thor's daughter pushed a little extra weight on her sled. You may have noticed she had a water bottle there. It is, it's muggy out there. I've been here every year, and for some reason, this just feels like the hottest year. I agree, Sean. It is warm. I was out there yesterday. At one point, they said in some areas of the turf, now we're talking the darker colored paint there in the finish line and, and the start line, it reached 126 degrees. I will tell you, though, where the green field is, it's a little bit cooler. And I will also say, I didn't get much of a breeze the last few days when I was out there competing. There is a nice breeze, but it is muggy, it is humid, it is hot. Welcome to the Midwest. I'm from Nebraska. <laughs> it's the Midwest. Different type of heat around here. For more on the weather, let's go down to Nikki Brazier. <laughs> I can confirm it is, in, in fact, incredibly hot and humid down here on the field of play. Uh, the nice thing is, though, to note that the alpacas are made of a sort of like powder coated metal, and so those implements are not getting super hot down here in the sun. Uh, tested that out before this, this test started, but you guys heard it with the men in the last test with Roman Krennikov saying that this year's test is incredibly hotter, even more hot than last year's, which definitely changes a little bit about how these athletes have to approach it. And that's, that's probably why you're seeing that water out there, Sean. Not a bad idea. Laura Horvath is now your leader along with Emma Tall and Alex Gazan is moving back to the sled and Jamie Simmons as well. Now Annie Thorstadter is done and she's putting, a, putting her belt on before she attacks those two. 53 pound, 24 kilo kettlebells. Emma Tall looks great. I like her strategy there. She was dipping underneath, solid swing, really using her hips to send the kettlebells back between her legs and then thrusting them forward onto her shoulders. Versus Alexis Gazan, she's taking a, a little bit of a break here, but you'll notice she goes straight down with the kettlebells. Um, it's just a little bit more pull. Maybe that's the way she likes to roll, but. I would prefer a little bit more of a back swing to, to kind of use more momentum there. Getting it over here. Alex Kazam on the right side of your screen right now. First in third place. Sutter getting a set. Catching David Sutter. Taking a break there on those kettlebell clean and jerk. Left side of your screen, you got Laura Horvath and Annie Thoris on her Horvath. Needs to get to the 17 rep mark before she will be able to reload her kettlebells 
and start pushing the sled back. Now, Laura did win this test last year, Sean, but like we mentioned earlier, there was weather, a little bit rainy, a little bit mist, so the ropes were a little bit too slick for them to actually be in the test. So we'll see how she handles the legless rope climb. She handled the kettlebell clean and jerks really well, so stronger athlete, no surprise there. I would like to see how she does on these legless rope climbs. Horvat and Gazan onto the sled, and now it's Alex Gazan who is slightly ahead of Horvat. Gazan is on the left. Horvat and Emma Tall are on the right. Emma Tall is in the dark shorts. Alex is taking a little bit of a break, probably strategic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill you in on a little secret. She is the best legless rope climber in both the men and the women. Individual age group. Yeti, the official cooler and drinkware of the Noble CrossFit Games. Head to Yeti.com for more. Horvath and Gazan back to the ropes for round two along with Emma Tall. They are your top three. Now this is where Gazan just needs to stay in her lane. Horvath has a, a year or two up on her in the competitive realm. Gazan just needs to do her thing. If she's feeling like she can climb the legless rope climb, she needs to go and not worry about what Laura's doing. If she feels like she needs to rest, she needs to take some time to rest. But this is right here, guys, this is her jam. She loves those legless rope climbs. Laura, on the other hand, has that rock climbing experience. So the grip, I don't think Laura is much of a factor at all. It's literally muscular endurance at this point for both of them. Both Kazan and Horvath are through their first of two rope climbs here in round number two. Kazan making her second straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Showed up as a rookie last year and finished 24th. Not a bad start to the rookie season. Women's division here, Ariel Lowen. Looking to begin round number two. The 20 rep mark is when they will go back to the kettlebells for 12 more clean and jerks. Here it goes, Alex. Alex on her, her second up. set. I think that might have been Sean maybe a 20 second rest. That's aggressive. Control. That is aggressive. Laura, meanwhile, you see, mark. still kind of shaking things out now. Solid there. rep, and your leader, Alex Kazan, Alex Kazan won the North America West semifinal. And I got to give you props, Stacey. You called that early on when a lot of people told you, God, that might not be the best pick. You stuck with it, and she wound up winning. I did. I talked to her coach, Justin Kotler, and he kind of gave me this little, like, swagger of confidence. Like, you know, we've been working working on that. She's got the talent, she's got the strength, she's got everything she needs. We've just been working on what's happening between the ears. And to me, that really said something. If she's got everything she needs, and she's just been working on the mental part of the game, man, she's a force to be reckoned with, for sure. Emma Tall and Laura Horbath working their way back to the sled. Fighting for second place behind Alex Gazan. Gazan, 12 more clean and jerks to complete here. And then at the 32 rep mark, Gazan will push her sled forward again. Here comes Horvath, who comes into this test. Seventh place overall with 202 points, but she only trails Ariel Lowen for third by 23 points. And there's lots of time yet. It's Friday. We still have Saturday and Sunday left to go. A lot of tests yet to complete. Now you'll notice here, Alex Kazan going with a little bit of a push press, doing well with it. Um, Emma Tall, as soon as she gets going here, she does a little bit of a push jerk. Um, and I'm not sure the way that Laura is going to approach this round here. We'll see here in a second. But a little bit of a jerk underneath. Emma clearly re-dipping those knees to get underneath those kettlebells. You want to jerk a little bit, like T.S. mentioned in the previous uh, heat there, that it does save a little bit on the shoulders. However, it does take a little bit more accuracy, precision, timing underneath some relatively odd objects. Two of them, heavy, 53 pounds each, 24 kilos per piece. Not light. Emma Lawson has now moved into fourth place in this heat. She's out there in the dark top in those army green shorts with a belt on. And now Emma Lawson is only seven reps back at Alex Kazan here. As Kazan has loaded her kettlebells up, and she will be the first to this sled push. Now here comes Alexis Raptus and Jamie Simmons and Annie Thor's daughter as well. 
this is the first time we've seen Alex relax the hands like that. Before she was pushing it with those bent arms, and now she's kind of letting that blood pool back down to the fingertips through the whole arm, through the shoulders, just relaxing as she takes a strategic break here and gets ready to go again. Nobody in the first heat was able to complete this test inside the 18-minute time cap. Abigail Domic got the farthest. She got nine reps into her final set of 12 clean and jerks. Kazan is going to finish this sled push right as Emma Tall gets started on hers. Kazan taking a leisurely stroll back to the rope. Lots of time on the clock yet, Sean. 18 minute time cap, we're a little over 10 and a half in. If she moves as fast as she did on, on that last set of legless rope climbs, she will have plenty of time to, to cross the finish line. Emma Tall has just closed out her sled push. Laura Horbath is looking to be the next woman to do that. And Emma Lawson is starting to creep up on Laura Horbath there. And there is Lawson. It's about a sled length behind Laura Horvath. Horvath is done, and now Lawson is done. Contact. North Park, you guys want to see a finisher? Alex Kazan. Two more times left. There goes Alex making the move. Beautiful, using those legs. That's the kip I'm talking about. Short, choppy little steps. Fast hands down the rope. Believe it or not, you could blow up just on the descent down because you have to control your descent down. You can't just fall. Kazan going to the cooler. She's trying to cool herself off. But tall. Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath have yet. Six to start the rope climbs. And meanwhile, Alexis Raptus and Annie Thorsauter now have finished their sled pushes. Raptus, the overall leader. The leader will always be dressed in that white jersey with the red shorts. Rope climb. All eyes of road, North Park on now, Alex Kazan here. Alex Kazan finished her last rope climb at the time on the clock, seeing approximately 11.45. Took a little bit longer to rest there, but looks great going up. So I'm to get through her first road climb as well. Kazan starting to go to that tip. She'll make it now. Has to just, control the descent. Just get down with the control. Get beyond that. Oh, it. Yeah. Beautiful Alex Kazan with five minutes of change now to get across the finish line and become the first woman to finish this test inside the 18-minute time gap. And without about a 45-second rest there, a little water pour down her spine, quick shake of the hands, a little chalk up. She got through the hardest part. Not to say the rest of this isn't hard. That back sled with all that weight on there, 440 pounds. You talk about the pit yesterday in test number two. I mean, Chase said it earlier with the men. It's like flipping that thing onto the ground and adding more weight on that thing. Not easy. These women are Superheroes, you guys. Like, I can't express enough how hard oh, this was after just three other tests really before this. You are fatigued, it's hot. Gazan through 38 of the 47 total scored repetitions. She's got nine to go, We're making that eight to go now. You have on this final four set. Minutes remaining. Four minutes. And then Mattal back there. Mattal's on the left side of your screen. Getting back to work on the kettlebells. Laura Horvat. Finally making her way back. Mattal has half of her set remaining. Now she has six left. Gazan. Four more reps to go for Gazan. Now, he's just four reps away from finishing up this set. 
There he goes. Here comes Laura Horvath. Five reps to read for Paul. Make that four. Two more reps to go for Alex. Going to be a sled race to the finish. Alex Gazan is now done and smartly puts those things right onto the sled. You see Lyle just dropping and have to lug him over there. Brent Kukowski did that to the men. And now Gazan is onto the sled. Well, Emma Tall is just about done with her final set. Gazan immediately comes off the sled. She's not only sweaty, but she poured that water down her spine. I don't think she's completely dry. She did slip. You notice they're using their trap muscles, they're using their lat muscles, they're using their biceps and triceps to push that sled. Well, Emma Tall is on the right. Gazan is on the left. They're about dead even. And here's what you want to do, Sean. You want to stay low to the ground. You want to keep your hips parallel to the floor, and you want to just keep moving your feet. They do not want to go, trust me. Your calves are burning at this point. Your quads are blowing up. But you just got to keep them moving. Gazan finally starting to push it in, so it's going to be Emma Tall who's going to get in, and Emma Tall will take the alpaca. She just kept her feet moving. She stayed low to the ground. Gazan is slipping. She lost a shoe. The shoes matter. I mean, Noble hooked them up with some cleats. I'm surprised to see them not more of them out here. Well, Gazan now with one shoe is going to try to, now she's going to ditch the other one. Laura Horvath is threatening to catch Gazan. Horvath is on the right. But Gazan now ditching the socks. And Laura Horvath is looking to wrap up a second place finish in this test. Head judge comes over to Gazan's lane and says, you've got to put your shoes back on, my dear. Holy smokes. Well, Horvath is in. That'll be a second place finish for her. Remember, she was only out of the top three by 23 points was Horvath. 16.36.18 seconds, and now a minute and change before we hit the time cap. Here comes the leader. Here comes Emma Lawson. Alexis has... What do you think? Maybe three more feet to get to the blue line. Just the front of the sled needs to touch the blue line, Sean. But, oh my goodness, she doesn't even have her second shoe on yet. Well, the two feet that matter are the ones that she's dealing with right now. She's got to get her shoes back on. And here come Emma Lawson and Alexis Raptus. Raptus is in that white jersey, the leader's jersey. And now Gazan. Her shoes are not on, Sean. They're literally, toes are in the shoes. Oh my. She is going to save it. Now here comes Emma Lawson ahead of Alexis Raptus. So Lawson is done. That's big for her. And Alexis Raptus, who has yet to finish outside the top five, is going to finish fifth. Beautiful finish. Wow, Sean, she is going to have four top five finishes here after this test. That is so impressive. The Raptus looking like she's going to hang on to that leader's jersey. Emma Tall is going to take the test. Laura Horvath is going to move up the overall standings. Alice Gazan dealt with a shoe problem. She's still going to take third place. And how about Alexis Raptus? Started this as a teenager. Her first games appearance was in the teen division. The very first year it started, 2015. Well, it's a wild second and final heat. Emma Tall is going to win her first test of her career. Her prior best finish was third place in event one in 2021. But Alex Gazan not only had to deal with all the equipment out there, but two shoes as well at the end. But a great race of at the finish of this test. Laura Horvath out early, but then she soon had some company. She did, she was out early. I liked seeing that, but then Gazan came, uh, came striking back, caught up on those legless rope climbs. Beautiful work, short, choppy little steps, using those frog leg kicks and swings to get her up that rope. Handled the kettlebell clean and jerks with ease, even push pressing the entire way. This is where Tall made her ground. She was jerking underneath those kettlebell clean and jerks. I think that helped her in the end, saved her legs a little bit, saved her shoulders, grip a little bit, and gave her a solid finish. Well done. First career test win for Emma Tall.
Laura Horvath looking to punch her way into the top five, if not higher, with that second place result. And Alice Gazan, despite losing both of her shoes, will take third and another top five finish for Alexis Rappas, who looks to continue to be your leader heading into test five, and it's Emma Lawson in fourth. Let's head down to Nikki Brazer with Emma Tall. Emma, when you saw Alex just out of your peripheral vision and she was just a bit ahead of you, what did you need to do to pull ahead and make it to the finish first? Well, I know that la that last sled was going to be like win it or lose it. So when I saw that I had opportunity, I just went for it. We have all experienced what it's like to have a long grinder of a test like this. What do you have to do mentally to prepare for every implement that is to come? In a workout like this, when you're very easy to blow up, I think you really have to take a step back. And when you are close enough to the end of the workout, that is when you put the pedal down. Always save some in the tank. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. First career test win for Emma Tall. And we're going to put the overall leaderboard in a blender and see what comes out after that test. Four tests are down. Two tests remain here on day number two. Team test four coming up next. So stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.